Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Monday, April 1, 2024. The year is 1941. Our main topic, Soviet border guards open fire on civilians attempting to cross the border from the Soviet Union to Romania near Fantana Alba, killing between 44 and 3,000 people. On April 1, 1941, a tragic event occurred in northern Bukovina, now part of Ukraine, when Soviet border guards opened fire on civilians attempting to cross the border from the Soviet Union to Romania near the village of Fantana Alba, now known as Stary Vovchwinets. The incident, known as the Fantana Alba Massacre, resulted in the deaths of between 44 and 3,000 civilians, according to various sources. The exact number of fatalities remains disputed, with some witnesses claiming that survivors were tortured, killed, or buried in mass graves, while others were taken away to be tortured and killed by the NKVD, the Soviet secret police. The historical significance of this event lies in its representation of the brutal nature of the Soviet regime and its attempts to control the movement of people across its borders. The massacre took place during a period of heightened tension between the Soviet Union and Romania, and it highlights the desperation of those who sought to escape the Soviet regime and the extreme measures taken by the authorities to prevent this. The Fantana Alba massacre has been referred to as the Romanian Cotton due to its similarity to the Cotton Massacre, in which thousands of Polish officers were killed by Soviet authorities in 1940. Both incidents demonstrate the brutality and ruthlessness of the Soviet regime in its efforts to maintain control over its territory and population. In conclusion, the Fantana Alba massacre is a significant event in the history of Eastern Europe, highlighting the tragic consequences of totalitarian regimes and their attempts to control the movement of people. It serves as a reminder of the human cost of political oppression and the importance of protecting human rights and freedoms. The year is 1873. On the news, the White Star steamer SS Atlantic sinks off Nova Scotia, killing 547 in one of the worst marine disasters of the 19th century. In a tragic turn of events, the SS Atlantic, a transatlantic ocean liner owned by the White Star Line, sank off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada, resulting in the loss of 547 lives. This catastrophic event occurred on April 1, 1873, during the ship's 19th voyage, and it remains one of the deadliest civilian maritime disasters in the North Atlantic Ocean. The White Star Line was a prominent British shipping company that operated between the British Empire and the United States, known for its focus on providing comfortable passages for both upper-class travelers and immigrants. The SS Atlantic was one of the company's ocean liners, and its sinking marked a devastating blow to the shipping line and to the families of the victims. The accident occurred when the SS Atlantic struck rocks off the coast of Nova Scotia, causing the ship to go down in the early morning hours. The tragedy was met with shock and disbelief, and it sent waves of grief throughout the communities affected by the disaster. The sinking of the SS Atlantic is significant not only because of the sheer number of lives lost but also because it highlights the risks and challenges faced by those who traveled across the Atlantic in the late 19th century. The incident serves as a poignant reminder of the bravery and resilience of those who embarked on such journeys in search of a better life. In the aftermath of the disaster, there were changes made to maritime safety regulations to prevent such tragedies from occurring in the future. The sinking of the SS Atlantic remains an important chapter in the history of transatlantic travel and a reminder of the sacrifices made by those who ventured out to sea in search of new horizons. Today, as we remember the 547 lives lost in this tragedy, we honor their memory by acknowledging the risks and challenges faced by those who dared to dream of a better life beyond the shores of their homeland. We also recognize the resilience and strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity and pay tribute to the bravery of those who continue to venture out to sea in pursuit of their dreams. 
Our selected holiday for today, Edible Book Day. Edible Book Day, celebrated annually on April 1st, is a unique and playful holiday that combines literature, art, and food. It is a time when book lovers and food enthusiasts come together to create, display, and devour edible books. This global event has been observed since 2000, with participants from diverse countries such as Australia, Brazil, India, Italy, Japan, Luxembourg, Mexico, Morocco, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Russia, and Hong Kong. The cultural significance of Edible Book Day lies in its ability to bring people together and inspire creativity. It encourages people to think outside the box and push the boundaries of traditional bookmaking. The event celebrates the art of bookmaking, while also highlighting the importance of food and its role in various cultures. It is a day to appreciate the beauty of literature and the joy of good food. Moreover, Edible Book Day provides an opportunity for people to come together and share their passion for books and food. It fosters a sense of community and promotes cultural exchange, as people from different parts of the world come together to celebrate this unique holiday. Overall, Edible Book Day is a fun and lighthearted holiday that celebrates the intersection of literature, art, and food. It is a time to be creative, have fun, and appreciate the beauty of books and food. On this day, in 1949, Paul Manafort, American lobbyist, political consultant, and convicted felon, was born. Paul Manafort is a seasoned political consultant and lobbyist with a remarkable track record in American politics. Over the years, he has served as an advisor to several successful presidential campaigns of Republicans, including those of Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, and Bob Dole. Manafort's expertise in campaign strategy and management has undoubtedly contributed significantly to the success of these campaigns. In 1980, Manafort co-founded the lobbying firm Black, Manafort, and Stone, which later became a powerful force in Washington, D.C. The firm represented various foreign leaders, including former president of Ukraine Viktor Yanukovych, former dictator of the Philippines Ferdinand Marcos, former dictator of Zaire Mobutu Sisi Sacco, and Angolan guerrilla leader Jonas Savimbi. Manafort's ability to navigate complex political landscapes and build relationships with influential leaders is a testament to his exceptional diplomatic skills. Manafort's success in the political arena continued when he was appointed chair of the Trump presidential campaign in June 2016. Although his tenure was cut short in August of the same year, his contributions to the campaign were significant. It is worth noting that Manafort's career has not been without controversy. He has faced criticism for his lobbying efforts on behalf of foreign governments, particularly those with questionable human rights records. However, it is important to recognize that Manafort has also worked with various philanthropic organizations throughout his career, demonstrating his commitment to giving back to society. Despite the challenges he has faced, Paul Manafort remains a respected figure in American politics. His extensive experience and expertise have earned him a reputation as a shrewd political strategist and effective lobbyist. As he continues to navigate the complex world of politics, it is clear that Manafort's impact on American political history will be felt for years to come. We remember the life of Abaka Khan, ruler of the Mongol Ilkhanate, b. 1234, who died on this date in 1282. Abaka Khan was a prominent Mongol ruler who played a significant role in the history of the Ilkhanate. Born in 1234, he was the son of Halaku Khan and Lady Yesensen, and the grandson of Tolwi. Abaka ascended to the throne in 1265, following the death of his father, and reigned for 17 years until his own death in 1282. During his reign, Abaka faced numerous challenges, including civil wars within the Mongol Empire. He engaged in a series of conflicts with the Northern Khanate of the Golden Horde, which lasted for several years. Despite these challenges, Abaka remained determined to expand the Ilkhanate's territories and increase its influence. One of Abaka's most notable achievements was his attempt to invade Syria under the Mamluk Sultanate. Although his efforts were ultimately unsuccessful, they demonstrate his ambition and strategic thinking. The Second Battle of Homs, which took place during his reign, was a significant event in the history of the region. Abaka's leadership was marked by several other notable accomplishments. He was known for his administrative reforms, which aimed to strengthen the Ilkhanate's infrastructure and improve the lives of his subjects. 
He also promoted cultural and religious tolerance, allowing Christians, Muslims, and other religious groups to coexist peacefully within his territories. Despite his achievements, Abaka's reign was not without controversy. He faced criticism for his handling of the Mongol Empire's finances and his relations with other Mongol leaders. Nevertheless, his legacy as a skilled military leader and a just ruler has endured. In conclusion, Abaka Khan was a significant figure in the history of the Mongol Empire and the Ilkhanate. His leadership was marked by both achievements and challenges, but his determination to expand his territories and promote cultural tolerance left a lasting impact on the region. Today, he is remembered as a skilled ruler who played a vital role in shaping the history of the Middle East and Central Asia. This was Today in History, an AIA podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.